Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Emilio. Uh, I currently live in Seattle, Washington. And I'm in my last course for the program, actually. Um, I've been a data scientist for three years now. After my undergrad, I started as a data scientist, even without data science uh, experience. But yeah, I learned a lot here and I've used a lot of it in, at work. Um, I previously worked at Western Digital and now I'm working for a consulting company on a project with the federal government, which is very exciting. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the questions. So next, uh, yeah, Rafael, you can go. You all should be able to speak, so. Um. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Rafael Hernandez. Uh, I am in the information management program, but I'm getting the certificate of advanced studies in data science. So I've taken a quite a few data science classes. Um, I sort of gravitated towards it because the information management program, I felt like it's a little bit more theoretical and I felt in the data science program, I could have some skills that were sort of measurable. And um, I mean, I, I, my background comes from teaching and also from coaching. And so I've also dealt with statistics and with data, but I never really knew what to do with it, you know, um, besides look at it in a spreadsheet. And so once I was able to actually start um, learning how to manipulate it, not manipulate it, but work with it and transform it and shape it and examine it and analyze it, I just kind of fell in love with it. And here I am. Hi, I'm Courtney. I am also a second year ADS student in the iSchool. Um, I did my undergrad at Syracuse in the Maxwell School, and this is now my last semester. Um, can I go? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Dikshita and uh, I am the second semester of my master's in applied data science, first year of my master's in applied data science at the iSchool. I am currently working as the faculty assistant for one of the core subjects that is intro to DS and I'm helping the other grad students with their concepts on uh, data science and machine learning and coding in R. Uh, I've always been interested in data science ever since my undergraduate, so um, I did take this step of uh, pursuing masters after thinking a lot and then um, thinking about how I could help um, contribute to the world of data science. So great. Um, so I think probably Jay and myself have a bunch of questions, but uh, folks that are listening in, if you want to type them into the chat, uh, Jay will keep track of those because uh, he's better at that than me and pass them on. And then when we ask questions, so you don't all have to feel obligated to answer, but if you, you, know, if you want to, that's fine. And um, so I, I wanna start with one, one or two questions. So maybe the first one is, um, as you've become more knowledgeable about the field of data science, then you're all kind of at different levels of where that is. But I'm curious for each of you, what's been your biggest surprise or kind of thing that you didn't expect as you kind of have come up to speed in this field and are coming up to this field? And, Obviously, we'll continue to be learning as we kind of go forward in that. Can answer that? If, um, yeah. We can hear you. Um, yeah. Uh, so the most surprising thing for me was honestly uh, how new data scientists, uh, science is in the industry, and how many people still don't uh, know how to manage it well. So this actually comes from. Uh, uh, Dr. Salt's uh, class that we uh, that I took uh, this quarter, technically, um, where you know data science projects are essentially research uh, projects. You don't know, uh, you haven't seen the data yet, um, and you know everybody else around you is also you know not knowing what is happening, how to make the project more efficient. And uh, it has helped me a lot just um, uh, learning about you know the steps. Uh, you need to take for a data science project. And I know it sounds a little bit boring, but it essentially changed the, the way that I go about projects and it helps efficiency. Um, so that was the most surprising thing for me. Thank you. Uh, I would say if I can go next. Um, the most surprising thing for me is really 
it's a bit of a contrast to Emilio, I, how old the foundation of what data science is, right? It's, it's statistics. And I feel like in the age of the technology that we're in now, the rapid response to being able to, to you know, crunch the data now with the technology we have, basic statistics that have been used for years are now being able to apply to multiple different fields in a rapid response due to the technology you know, explosion in the past couple of years. And, and being able how that has exploded um, and really accelerated the use of it. I'm not, I'm not a very big statistics person. So that was definitely a, a tough challenge for me. I'm more of a technological, uh, technological person. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge, but uh, really was surprising how much statistically based it was uh, on, on the front of that. So really getting that, my chops up on that was, was very helpful on that piece too as well. Maybe one last person want to kind of take this one and then we'll jump to some other questions. I think um, it's just... I think two more people can go. That's fine. Both of you can. Yeah. So Raphael, uh, you can do and then... And okay. I, I think it's, I was thinking about this this morning. So I did my undergrad in history and I was just sort of thinking like, what is a historian going to do in terms of how they analyze history, you know, you know, from 2000 till today or, you know, 40 years or 60 years from now, and they're gonna have to repent on data science. They have to, you know, everything's digital now and there's so much information, so much records. And I think that, you know, that um, I'd never thought about it from that perspective. My, my, in terms of history, I always saw it as like, you know, stuff that was in the books and it was just sort of uh, two dimensional or just flat. And now it's just all around us and it's just, you know, it's just everywhere. Um, I was surprised uh, when I saw how sensitive uh, the data science and machine learning algorithms could get. Um, especially with the recommender systems, they are very specific. So when I started understanding how they work, I was genuinely surprised by that. Interesting. Yeah. Courtney? I would say what surprises me most is the divide between people who understand data and those who don't. And so a very large part of data science and learning it at a master's level is beyond just learning the code, beyond just learning the mathematics behind the algorithms but being able to be a storyteller and really convey the results that you have and the insight you gain because very few people understand them. So a very large part of uh, the program is being able to articulate those insights that you find so that other people can understand them and make decisions based on them. So there's a conversation going on in chat. Um, Joe basically asks, if you're not looking at chat now, that's fine. Um, he asks, a recommendation for someone who doesn't have, um, you know, data science or AI experience. Uh, Joe has IT experience. Um, so maybe can you all talk a little bit about um, your different background experience? Because obviously you're varied. Uh, Raphael's volunteered that his, his classical training was in history. So maybe talk a little bit about your background and, um, you know, both your background and as you think going forward, did do you think students with different backgrounds kind of have a you know, better chance for success or something like that? I, I really think that data is going to be the, the next language, right? Like coding and data and, and kind of go hand in hand. But I think anybody in any field has been doing it. I, I have a wife who's a school teacher and I'm trying to teach her how to utilize the data, right? They, it's a very data rich elementary school teacher, right? Where there's tons of data being collected and what that can be really used for, right? Whether it's correcting it for just the, the standard testing that they're doing, but how she can utilize that and how they can find their uses in that. I think it's gonna be uh, table stakes for our children and for our next generation to be able to speak in data. Um, so data science or data literacy, you know, there's many different ways you can call it, but I think it's really the next, the next level of, of human interaction is how we share our data and how we communicate our data. And how about, how about Joe's question about like, should he be worried if he starts to try to get into this field without having kind of a data science nope. experience? Joe, I was, a, I was a media studies major. I made movies for my, for my undergraduate. I did, I did Final Cut Pro and all that kind of stuff and weave my way, found my way and I saw a niche of being able to solve problems with data. Uh, and then I get, now I call it getting bit by the data bug. So from my perspective, no, there's no barriers from any, any perspective, any, any career you're coming from. About uh, Agnad, so you've, you've, you're, you're kind of just starting in the flow. So uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about both yourself and maybe some of your, uh, 
you know, your, your the friends that you've met in the program and, you know, does having a certain background helpful or is it pretty diverse? You want to talk a little bit about it? From I mean, so yeah. that's, that's kind of, that's, that's very interesting for Joe to ask that because I asked myself that same question when I decided to study ADS, because I, I come from, uh, I studied international relations and international business for my bachelor's degree. So no computer experience, no mathematics for about 15 years before I came to Syracuse. And despite that, I think it's just one of the most fantastic things I've studied. It's intuitive. It's um, and to add on to what Courtney said, it's it's not just about the maths or the AI or the algorithms. It's about the connections, the patterns, and how everything fits together with domain expertise. So for 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 someone like Joe with the experience he has in in IT, I don't see that being a barrier for him at all. If anything, that's just something that he can use and leverage. And uh, just to follow on to that, you, you know you or somebody else can kind of add context. So uh, Diane has a kind of a follow-up question, which is a worry about not having a strong math um, or, or IT background. So Joe at least had IT. How about if you don't have either math or IT background? That, that defines me to a T. I, 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 was, I was really bad at maths and computer science at school. Um, and I'm doing really well over here. So you don't need maths or IT. And the program does an excellent job of teaching it to you so that it is so intuitive and you can see its interoperability with all kinds of different problems because data science is beyond just coding, beyond just the computer science. It's about being able to um, support quantitatively and then also um, deliver insights to any problem using different algorithms. So. Um, I think it'll become really intuitive with the program, but you learn so much to the point where um, it does. It really does not matter what background you come in with. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the beautiful thing about data science is you can apply it anywhere. I mean, you can take data and biology and um, you know whether how fast the elevator goes or what algorithm I should put in the elevator, right? It, um, you know, I've worked in uh, finances, I worked in IT, I worked in uh, travel. Uh, it's applicable literally anywhere. And if you have a passion for anything, right, as you go through the SU program, you can, you know, if it's movies, if it's history, um, you can base all, all your projects on that subject, right, your final projects, which you work out throughout the, uh, the whole program. And honestly, it makes it so much better to learn it that way. If I am passionate about soccer, I can have a, uh, my project be on, you know, how to choose a pr uh, player whenever I'm looking for a uh, center back or a forward, uh, how do I uh, find the best case or the cheapest uh, one. There is so many applications of data science and, you know, there's no, uh, I feel like you're the only one that can block yourself from learning it. Uh, I mean, you, know, you have different programming languages <clears throat> and there's some of them that are easier to learn than others, especially when you're new to programming. Um, but honestly, it, it's up to you. Uh, if you're passionate about something, you can apply it there. Uh, if you wanna learn something new, you can apply it there and learn something new. Uh, it, it really is a, a really beautiful career. So Genevieve asked, uh, when you started the program, did you know what you wanted to do when you were going to graduate? Did you have a clear vision of kind of what you wanted to do? Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm adding to what, what Genevieve said, but maybe a clear view of what you wanted to do like three years after you started, or was it more of, you know, start and explore and kind of figure it out as you go? of what I want to do after my master's or with my master's. So I, I definitely want to be, become a data scientist. And three years from now, I do see um, myself working with a good firm um, and dealing with the big data that's coming in. So, and then that was the reason why I chose uh, to pursue master's in data science specifically because of um, the math, the stats, and all of the insights that go into it. Um, so, yeah. Others? Yeah, I, I thought it'd be something completely different. Especially when I first, not, not completely different. When I, when I first started it, I thought I'd be 
you know, doing more software, more, more coding, and it's really the, the core foundation of how to apply it. I think the applied data science that this, this curriculum is, is really speaks to what it is. Um, because if you find ways that it goes in your everyday life, it, it's actually kind of ruined me a little bit because when I'm watching TV and I'm watching, especially going through this time of COVID and elections and going through my, my career, um, through the, the process, it's been like, oh, that's not right. That You're just saying these specific pieces, that's selection bias, that's this. You know, you start to really like realize what you're consuming in the outside world. Um, so it's really, it's really applicable on, on what you do and how you see it in your everyday life. And then you realize how you can apply it. And I think that's one of the things that is one of the most, uh, the best things about the program is, is that, right? The, the ability to apply it to, to your everyday scenarios. So going back a little bit, Abdul asked a question, not to stir the pot, but maybe Abdul wants to stir the pot. Uh, what professor or class had the biggest impact in how you want to shape the next chapter in your career? And I think maybe why. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe talk about the class, maybe not the professor, but talk about the class you took and why it was like interesting or useful. Um, so, you know, actually, I took a class with Mark and Courtney um, uh, managing a data science project. It, you know, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, like it, it is surprising how necessary it is to, to learn this. Um, right now, many of the data scientists come from different backgrounds, meaning they can come from chemistry, computer science. Um, uh, maybe physicists, uh, there's uh, people from everywhere. And this is new stuff, right? This is a very um, new uh, career. And there's not, uh, you know, I remember in my undergrad, there wasn't majors for data science yet. And uh, <clears throat> when you work with some, uh, with a company, with uh, another team, and they're like, here you go, here's the data, can you do this for me? Right, it's, uh, it's a lot harder than it seems, right? Um, there is so much that they don't understand about our, our process that we have to go through. And, you know, as a data scientist, we need to communicate that. And this, this class changed uh, my approach, uh, whether it is with, you know, ethics uh, behind data science, uh, right now, I'm working with the government on a uh, project that has to do with race and ethnicity, right? And well, it is very applicable here, right? And um, you know, as I talk to other people that are, that are data scientists with me, they don't know any of this. Um, they've all kind of just been thrown into the the project and just expected results from there. So it it was a very good class that I took. Anybody else? Uh, I think it was the intro to data, data science class for me because um, I think I had a lot of apprehension. I was definitely intimidated before I applied for the master's program. I was deciding whether to do information management or data science. And I think I would psych myself out and went with the information management. And so when I was able to do the data science, intro to data science class, I was, um, you know, it was sort of the hands on approach. and. Um, Dealing with the code and finally just wrestling with it and 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 going through some frustrations, but then also realizing that there's a lot of solutions out there, um, and figuring out how to find out those solutions. Um, you know, it just really, really um, kind of guided me towards it. And now I'm taking the visualization class, and so. Um, you know, now I, I get to sort of create some of the cool graphics that uh, that you see, and it just added a different dimension. You know, I was just actually doing work for it right now, and uh, I was kind of getting lost in time, just you know, playing with with visuals, with the data and the visualizations, and 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 so those two classes. Somebody else. Yeah, I would also agree that Intro to Data Science definitely gives the best seamless introduction to our uh, coding and then also shows you all the different applications of 
data visualization and quantitative analysis on so many different data sets. And so then when you take harder classes, like now I'm taking applied machine learning and big data analytics, and you're using those fundamentals that you learned in introduction to data science, everything um, is very seamless in that transition from just learning how to import the data set and visualize it to make an actual um, model and evaluate the results. Um, but I would say that I, I think the transition in the classes are really seamless and um, very easy to learn. Yeah, I have to secondly, I have to second Emilio on, and there's not a second of the press assaults is the, uh, the data science one, it was a pilot, you know, really first one we did that really, really enjoyed that class. Um, cause I think it being in the business, being not, you know, being in a career right now and having to actually apply what I'm learning here, that was the big barrier, right. Is being able to manage a project and understand that, um, was, was huge. And I think the other one, honestly, and then this speaks to the, the, the program is the balance of, uh, a Whit um, uh, Whitman school of studies that I took a business analytics class and I, I've been looting my, my mind right now, the precious name, but he was very knowledgeable and really, really had been in the business for such a long time. And his, his enthusiasm to help the, teach, help the kids understand what was going on in the business and what's, how to really apply that to a business aspect. I mean, being a person in the career, it was, it was very helpful to understand that. And that I frequently hung, hung on after him. was like, hey, I got the scenario at work. How do I breach this? Right? And even Fresh Salt's helped me with this a couple of times too. Like, how do I get past this barrier, uh, organizational challenge, um, besides just a data problem? And I think that's what the school really offers as well as that mentorship um, as capability as well. So somewhat related, but a little bit different. Diane asks, um, what's been the most challenging course in the program so far? Or if you're pretty much done, what's been the most? And um, any advice of how to get through it? Um, I am currently taking the subject uh, 772 IEC 772 quantitative reasoning for data science. Uh, that subject has been a little challenging because of the statistics that's involved. And we start thinking about stats in one direction, but then this beautiful course, it teaches us how to think about a particular um, stat concept in different ways and how expansive it is. Um, so um, to get through it, I would say, um, um, the beautiful book that's recommended, it has everything in it. Going through that and actually understanding everything from scratch um, and uh, using your in-depth analysis for it uh, is helping me a lot. And it, it will get you through the course. Anybody else want to talk about a hard class? So uh, the hardest class that I've taken so far was uh, visualization actually. Um, I'm not going into the technical classes uh, that I've uh, had experience before uh, in data science, uh, but the visualization class was uh, tough for me because it's different uh, and made me think more about the way that I go about uh, doing that analysis, uh, talking to the customer. Um, mainly, you know, the visualizations that I create, they have to have meaning, you have to tell a story and you know, you can't force someone, uh, your the client, because both uh, data and uh, the analysis that we do is very hard to explain to somebody that is not familiar with data science, right? Um, whether it's machine learning or uh, just creating the pipeline, it's a very tough uh, subject to present to somebody else. And uh, having to think uh, twice before you just come up with a pie chart. <clears throat> And one of the things that you'll learn is never make a pie chart. Uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it, uh, it was really hard because it was different uh, and something that I didn't really think about before uh, going into SU. Anybody else? I'll give, um, so I'll, I'll actually also answer that. I always I hear from a bunch of different students. And I do think it depends a little bit on this, on your background. Um, I forgot one of you mentioned that as well. Um, so like everybody comes in with strengths and weaknesses and that's okay. And I think that kind of 
makes different courses maybe a little harder or a little easier. Um, one of the classes I often hear as a challenge is um, our big data class, IST 718. So, um, but again, it depends on your background. So if you have an IT background and have done Python and, and um, other things, it's probably a little easier, but if you haven't, that can definitely be a challenging course as well. So, but it definitely depends on the background. Yeah, um, I, I would say if anything, the biggest advice I could say is just start learning some Python and R. Like it's, it's gonna be one of those, tools that you have to use throughout the, the entire course. If you have no computer programming background, there's so many courses out there nowadays. Um, Udemy and you know all, all these Coursera courses that you just take one of those, you'd be, you get a good jump start on, on what you're gonna be approaching uh, in your data science things. And that would take a big edge off the piece of that. And there's so many good ways to learn it too. So that's probably the best advice I would say for that piece to overcome those hard classes. And just to add to what Mark, uh, Mark said, if you're not part of SU yet, um, you do get access to link, uh, LinkedIn Learning, which so many courses there. Uh, if there's anything you're interested in, uh, Python or any machine learning things, there's courses there that you can take and get a certificate on if you want. So Jay, you've been watching all the different chat questions and it's been scrolling by, so I might have missed some. Um, are there any questions either from people that have directly messaged you or um, that I missed, or maybe questions that you want to ask that haven't even come up yet? Yeah, so nothing has been asked in the chat. Um, it's mainly people who have to drop off thanking everyone for, um, you know, for their, their, their time. Um, you know, one thing I might, I might ask is, you know, in terms of like, you know, to both the students who did the online program, because obviously it's different for situation than the students who did the campus program, um, just kind of like what their their favorite takeaway was from that aspect of it. On God, I know you're a little more new here, but you know, you're still, I mean, time's flying, you're about 10 weeks in now. So if, if people can just kind of touch on, um, and that would be a little more specific to the Syracuse program, than you know, maybe more broad data science focused. So I'll do the help first. For me, a lot of it was um, the social aspect of learning on campus. Like it's you, I'm not just learning from professors. I'm not just learning from my TAs. I'm learning from my housemates. I'm learning from people who are in my course. I'm learning from my project mates. And in turn, I'm also kind of teaching them things that I know that maybe they wouldn't know. So it's the cross-cultural aspect of being able to work in teams on something that is completely alien to you and still being able to complete a task. I think that's an important takeaway for the on-campus program, at least. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah, with the online program, what I like is I can work with people in different time zones in different parts of the world. Sometimes I've had professors that were in other parts of the world as well. So that's that's always kind of interesting uh, to, to sort of, to, to try to organize how to how to get a group project done when you know uh, I'm on the west coast and people are elsewhere so that's but but it's 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 cool in the sense that um, you know I would never meet these people otherwise and so um, I enjoy that very much yeah I think that to speak to the online aspect I think that really it honestly helps nowadays because if you're in data science and you're really into this a technical field like this sometimes you, chances are your team is spread, right? So I, I work, I work with an India team. I was working with an Australia team. So doing this is, you know, if I hadn't been in this, right, this is really good practice, right? From an online perspective to be able to manage your time uh, effectively. And a lot of data scientists are, are kind of left to figure out to manage their own time when they need it, as long as they meet that deadline. Um, and that's really, that's like the core of like 2SU part of it, just being able to manage your time, get it done effectively. And, and I wasn't able to do the two, you know, two courses a semester because mm -hmm. A, uh, funding and B, just time, I have two young ones. And I think that's the really benefit of the online course is I was able to take one a one course a quarter. Um, and it took me a little bit longer than most people, uh, but it's really been great to be able to have that ability to stretch that out and not have it feel like I'm left behind or I'm not completing what I need to complete in time.
Anybody else? Just going to what Walmart said, um, I would second that. Um, you know, one time I actually was traveling for work uh, to the Philippines and I took a class at 2 a.m. over there, right? Uh, it's uh, the professors are very understanding of your situations, you know, they've been through it. Um, so they they will uh, they will help you accommodate uh, to whatever you're going through at that moment. And, you know, through COVID, I know some people were not able to take some classes and the professors were very understanding about this. Um, you know, you get to, I mean, I was mentioning, you get to meet people from different time zones. And, you know, I've met people from the city that I live in um, that is on the opposite side in the U.S. Uh, so it's, it's very cool. Uh, you make contacts and you see what they're working on. You know, uh, there's people that were working Microsoft who I've uh, talked to and they uh, helped me get an interview, right? It's, um, you get to make, meet a lot of people that are very cool uh, and, you know, you can sit in touch with. I would also just want to second that and say I think my classmates have been one of the most defining features of my um, graduate experience. In particular, Mark, Emilio, and I were in a group for the um, managing data science class that we took. Um, and I actually copied our Kanban board that we had made for a project I'm doing this semester. <laughs> so I reuse everything that I've learned. I learned so much from everyone I work with. Um, and whether you're online or in person in like either scenario, I think I've made really, um, I've met incredible people and it's one of the best parts of the program. Jeff, looks like a, a question did come through. I think we kind of touched on this a little bit with, um, like the course error or LinkedIn learning, but are there any additional resources for somebody who, who wants to learn a little data science just on their own? Uh, so, uh, sorry, Mark. Um, what I would say is uh, Kaggle is a great source. Uh, they have the data, they have the code, they have uh, problems if you want to try something new. Um, but honestly, just find your own data set. I think that would be the best thing is you find your own data set and you play around with it. Uh, once, you know, if you're passionate, uh, as I mentioned earlier about another subject, and you can find that data set that reflects uh, that passion, go for it. Uh, that, that's the best way that I've learned is that through the projects that I've had here and at you, if I'm passionate about something, I'll put a lot more attention to it and it's a lot easier to understand and uh, you know, learn. Yeah, I would, I would say that same thing, right? Like Kaggle and, and not just Kaggle for the data sets, but even Kaggle for the notebooks. If you look at there, like you can see people attempting different ways and really it's seeing the thought process of how people approach the problem. Not necessarily the code. I mean, you can copy all the code all you want, but if you don't understand their approach and a lot of people, you find that person that really comments well and does a good uh, notebook and a good markdown section where they really explain what they're doing. It could be the smallest data set in the world, but just having them see how they went through the process and how they approached it, because um, there's many different ways to do it. That's one of the most valuable things I learned, a lot of those things. Um, besides just the random ones that teach you the syntax of coding, those are the, some of the most important things is seeing how people approach the problems and what they came up with their solution. And there's another question in the chat. Did anyone get any sort of certificate um, before pursuing their master's degree? I think the question was focused on I mean, like, specifically in, in like the data science realm. Yeah. I don't think anybody got the CIS in data science before. I think you all just jumped right in to do the program, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I got some certificates uh, for an, uh, NLP, natural language processing, but I can tell you that it, it doesn't compare to the real thing uh, when you actually see real data. Uh, most of the um, Coursera, they kind of just did you click and play, and that's it. Yeah, I'm getting the cash right now in data science. And so I am thinking about doing the master's program. It's something I 
kind of grapple with every every night um discussing it with my wife so so you know i might do that okay ah the old classic question what other schools did you think about and why did you choose this year I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with that one, right? Because uh, honestly, GRE, <laughs> it was funny. It's, it's actually one of the, I think it was my uh, marketing studies class. One of the things we were, we were doing Google Analytics and searching why Syracuse comes up on certain searches on things and being able to see that part of it. And one of it is because the GRE and being able to kind of overcome that. And I think Syracuse is smart to understand that it's not about just a, you know, just a number that a, a test gives you. Um, and I was able to kind of lobby for my, you know, abilities and what I'm doing at work and how I want to apply it. And I think that's really good about Syracuse to do that is, is, was that piece of it. I know it seems kind of cheap, but like maybe I'm getting in like on a, on a, not with the academic basis of it, but it's, it's important. I mean, I'm in a, I'm a professional, I'm in a career. I have young kids. I didn't have time to go back and do a GRE and do that uh, whole thing, but I really wanted to advance my studies. So really was uh, something that was, you know, helpful for us to, to choose me and my wife has <laughs> roughly as a to choose that this is that this, this was the place for me to afford and, and, and uh, go for I would say the applied uh, aspect of it right? because it it's very uh, different to learn something on a textbook uh, or on a class online and actually applying it Right. When you get the data, it's not that there's always going to be the same path. Uh, you know, you're always going to read the data, process it, and model it, put it in a neural network. That's not always going to work. Um, and if applications, you know, trying it on different data sets, uh, getting the experience of the professors, they work in many different fields. I mean, uh, you just hear some of them work with the military doing an analysis and how to find bombs. Right. Uh, there's others that work in healthcare and getting their experiences and how they approach a problem. I think that is the most uh, beneficial thing as a data scientist because, you know, if you think one way, uh, you might solve the problem, but not as good as it can be. Right. Or it, it's um, something that helps out a lot just learning from each other's experiences. Uh, and the professors sure do have. Uh, many uh, stories to talk about in the class, which I think is the most valuable uh, part of the uh, program. So I was looking not only at different universities, but different degrees even. Um, and for me, what's, what, what SU did that a lot of universities didn't do is it gave me the opportunity to speak to Dr. Saltz and understanding what the course was about, understanding that it was not just computer science or stats or business. It was somewhere in between all of those courses while also being hands-on was, was integral to me making my decision to come to Syracuse. So it's, it's the program, it's the, the people that, are, that I had the opportunity to study under, being able to work with Dr. Saltz, for example, those are the kind of things that I think made Syracuse special for me.